Yo, 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 what's good? Thank you for coming to the House of Barf. I'm Chan Man. And before we get started, I would just like to emphasize that the content that we share on House of Barf is for informational and entertainment purposes only. We are not financial advisors and the information provided should not be considered as professional financial advice. Investing and financial decisions involve risk. And it's crucial to do your own research or consult with a qualified professional before making any financial choices. The opinions expressed on House of Barf are, are of our, our own and do not reflect the views of any organizations that we may be affiliated with. Please remember that past performance is not indicative of future results and the financial landscape can change rapidly. Always conduct thorough due diligence and seek financial advice from a financial advisor tailored to your personal needs and circumstances. By listening to this podcast, you agree that the host and in the future, if we have any guests, are not responsible for any financial decisions you make as a result of the information presented on House of Barf. Now, let's dive into today's episode. Yo, 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 what's good? It's Chandler G. Hayes, formerly known as Chan Man House of Barf. What's poppin'? I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. You know, hope you were able to spend time with the family, friends. Hopefully you went to some good cookouts, ate some good food. Hopefully you went to some good events, parties, whatever. I actually had a pretty good weekend. Uh, Celebrated uh, a couple birthdays. Um, It was nice. It was nice. Just chill with the family. You know, uh, wasn't nothing too crazy, but these events for me are starting to become the best events for me. Just kicking it in these, you know, these little events, nothing too crazy. Um, Woke up the next day, didn't have hangover, uh, ate a little bit, didn't eat too much. Actually, I ate a little bit too much, but it was not too much, too much. You know, it was it was good. I had a pretty good weekend. Um, Kicked it with my little ones. Uh, Yeah, it was really nice. But at the same time, uh, not to, you know, negate all that. Just take time out of our day just to acknowledge our fallen soldiers who fought uh, for us uh, while serving in the United States military. Uh, It's just, you know, a pleasure to actually come from a military background. I never served myself. I actually did um, uh, get selected to serve in the United States uh, Air National Guard down in Arkansas, Little Rock. Uh, But I did not accept the opportunity. Um... It was a long story. Uh, We can talk about it another time uh, because, you know, it's not about myself. Uh, Today is about acknowledging our our, um, fallen soldiers from the U.S. military. And, uh, yes, it's definitely just a pleasure uh, to actually come from a military background, um, uh, from uh, parents to siblings to uh, aunts and uncles, great aunts, great uncles, grandmas, grandpas. Uh, it's just a pleasure to, uh, have, I'm going to cut the air off for a second, but, uh, to be able to, uh, right now I'm recording in my car, uh, to be able to be a part of this, knowing that, uh, all the sacrifices that were made just for my family alone, let alone the whole country as a whole, uh, knowing that, you know, there's a lot of individuals who just live their lives going to the grocery store, just as I am right now. And uh, going to their events this weekend, whether it was graduations or proms or cookouts or anything, and not even maybe for a moment acknowledging actually what the holiday was about, uh, because they may not have any family that served or they never served themselves. So uh, it's just a pleasure to be able to be around uh, U.S. military, and maybe one day I may be able to, you know, do something for the military. I plan on dedicating a lot of my uh, life to uh, military and veterans, um, you know, as things start to progress and as I do well for myself, making sure that I keep donating to organizations like TAPS or, uh, you know, other military organizations that people see uh, see or deem uh, reputable um, to service our uh, veterans and our fallen soldiers and their families. So, yeah, this is a special holiday to me. It's a pleasure. I'm I, I'm excited that I was able to spend it with my uh my little ones and my family and just just kick it and have a good time. Uh other than that, everything is going well. Um so I started a new job. Uh nothing crazy. 
uh, started serving at a restaurant not too far away from my house. Uh, so, um, you know, just been doing that for the last two weeks. Uh, it's been going well. Uh, I can't wait to get on top of my bills. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, start getting these things under control. It's going to be wonderful. I'm excited. My uh, my little ones are having a little bit of a catch-22 uh, because they're like, Dad, we really enjoyed this past year uh, because uh, you weren't so focused on work because they know um, – from their perspective that when dad uh you know gets focused about work let me turn the fan down just a little bit when i get focused about work um they get concerned that you know um i'm gonna start focusing on work because they know i want to pay bills and they know i want to take them on vacations and they know i want to show them uh, a good life um and that i'm willing to possibly even you know, spend a lot of time focused on work other than, you know, you know, doing things with them. They're like, Dad, we really don't care about the money. We don't really care about, you know, we would love to go to the beach every now and then, but that's not our concern. Our concern is that we get to see you and our mom, you know, daily. We get to hang out with y'all. Um, and I'm not knocking anything, but it appears that they, they really want to hang out with me. I'm not sure if they want to hang out with me. Or that I'm creating an environment for them that's conducive, considering all the trauma and stuff that we've been going through in the last year or two. Uh, so I think I've been able to create a comfortable environment for them to feel like they're coming to a home. And now they're also excited because they're like, Dad, so it means that we may not lose the car in the house and everything. And I said, I don't know because it's just a server job. But I don't know. This may mean that I may be able to get on top of these bills, the BG&Es, the water sanitation, uh, you know, water company, the gas, the Washington Gas Company. Uh, we may be able to get on top of these bills, um, the mortgage, uh, and even the credit cards and everything. If we can get on top of these, then no, we won't be losing uh, the house and the car and everything. Um, we may be able to be in a position where we can start moving forward and we can actually start planning vacations to go to um, the beach and uh, was it Apex, this uh, huge ass um, Dave and Busters, essentially, uh, you know, they got go karts, bowling alleys, uh, uh, a bar, um, a restaurant bar. Uh, they have so many things inside that we can start planning these trips. We can start going to, um, you know, visit their family on their uh, mother's side. Um, you know, maybe I can, you know, put them on a plane or something or or drive them down there, um, you know, so that they can see their family, um, you know, uh, compared to the last year, year and a half, <laughs> you know, last two years, uh, it's been survival mode, just um, strictly just um, just trying to because uh, I, I wasn't working I was interviewing and I figured that one of these jobs were going to come through they didn't at all and um, one thing that uh, now that I'm working now is now I can start working on taking some classes to get some certifications um, you know um and was I doing the best thing with my money all the time? No. No, there was times I was like, screw it. I'd wake up and it should. It could have happened a few times. I was like, screw it. I don't give a damn. I'm about to lose everything. I'm about to go to this restaurant and I'm about to get their glazed uh, lamb chops. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, whatever. Side of mashed potatoes or whatever and asparagus. And I'm, I'm about to have somebody cook it for me. Uh, and I'm going to get a beer with it and I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm about to lose everything anyways. So did I do that? I did. Did I do it too many times? Probably. Because I didn't give a damn. I was like, screw it. You know, everything is crashing and burning. I'm not going to just lose everything and go down ha unhappy. You know, at least I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm gonna have some enjoyment. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, other than that, I was getting outside and I was taking my walks. I haven't taken a walk in about two weeks, maybe, you know, two to three weeks. But, I'm, you know, I'm going to get back out there getting on my walks. Things were getting really, you know, really tough, but uh, I just had to manage. I just had to manage and stay positive, you know what I'm saying, have a good time. And not to mention, um, you know, one thing that I also would stay focused on is understanding that just because you have to pivot 
or you have to, you know, do something different does not mean as an entrepreneur that you're not an entrepreneur. I was listening to a lot of Terrence Howard this weekend. Um, you know, I don't know anything he was talking about, but, you know, I was just trying to grasp some stuff that he was talking about. And, uh, you know, he talks about how, um, you know, a lot of stuff may seem the way that they taught us for years may not be true and, or in his, the way he'll say it is not true at all. Uh, you know, he talks about a lot of just things like that. He talks a, a more about a lot of like science, like astrology and whatnot. And that how, um, uh, you know, certain mathematical equations may not really equal up to what we've been taught over these years. But just because certain philosophers or, you know, people wanted to just make it make sense very quickly, uh, they went ahead and just try, tried to kind of force it on us. Um, and then we just stuck with it for years. And even to certain points, he would even bring up, uh, other people that he, I guess, deemed reputable, but were not listened to because they didn't have the mathematical equations behind their philosophies. Um, that more so it wasn't scientific or scientific, but it was more so, um, uh, philosophical, you know, uh, philosophy, uh, and I guess uh, philosophy doesn't really go well in the um, genre of science because, you know, where are your equations, where are your mathematics to back it, you know. So um, in, in the case of, you know, Chandler G. Hayes, you know, uh, you know, it's not backed by I don't have a lot of science right now backing anything or a lot of mathematics. But the only thing that I can really say from, you know, philosophy uh, standpoint is. Sometimes you do have to pivot. Sometimes you do have to uh, release and let go um, from certain s situations. And you never know that you may come back stronger and better. Um, so, for example, just because I picked up a job does not mean that I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm still an entrepreneur. I'm still an entrepreneur at heart. Now, we could listen to people talk about, you know, well, I can start a multi-million dollar business from scratch, um, you know, not knowing anybody or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but that's not my situation. I don't like, I don't even, I barely even know how to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know what I'm saying? There's individuals out there that are millionaires that if they lost their millions, they could bounce back and make their millions again. I probably could make somewhere between 50 to a hundred thousand dollars ASAP because I know how to do that. I've done it before I've lost it. And now I know how to do it again. And one way I know about doing it is starting off with a job, getting the job, saving up, putting in it in the Roth IRA, uh, uh, trading in the securities industry. That's what I, I know best. Um, I'm working on other things as well, such as uh, life insurance policies, figuring out how I can utilize these policies to the best of my abilities. Um, so, you know, uh, sometimes you're going to get a lot of what I would call, um, I don't know if it's encouragement, constructive criticism, or hate. It's funny how those um, all can kind of fit in the same category, but whatever you're doing. So you want to start a business, you know what I'm saying? I wrote a children's book. Um, I'll say that I've gotten a lot of love and I've also gotten a lot of what I would call constructive criticism or whatever it is. So people say, oh, this book is too long for children. Oh, this book has too many words per page for children. Oh, there's not enough illustrations. Oh, this book doesn't really make that much sense. Oh, it's not that deep. Oh, this book is just validation for your podcast or for your um, financial consulting slash therapy business that you're trying to build. And then on the other end, I, I get, oh my gosh, I'll, I'll get a lot of love. Now, the thing that I got to sit on is I can't allow, you know, compliments to make me and I can't allow insults to break me. Seriously, I've gotten to a point in my life where I'll sit there and I'll, I literally just listen to people because um, one, I'm just letting them release whatever they got to get out of their system. Um, it must feel good to be able to talk to a, an author and be able to, um, that'd be like if you had a friend who was like an actor or something, um, or a politician and, uh, being able to tell them, um, something like, you know, or they work very closely, you know, with, you know, the current, uh, situations we got going on with like the, the entertainment industry. And they're like, oh, you need to tell, you know, such and such that they can't run their policies that way or they need to bring down the industry because they knew that they were supporting this gang life and blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? And all the different various things, you know, 
Uh, so sometimes you just have to sit there and be like, uh, you know, they're, they're having a ball right now, shitting on my book right now. Uh, and not saying that, you know, the cause behind this book wasn't deep in my heart. It really was. And this is something that you really can't get from the children's book. But, um, if I could say from my point of view, is it perfect? It, it's not a perfect book. You know, it's not a perfect book. It's a, but you know what it is? It is a book. It is a product. It is something that's out there. And hopefully it gets into the right hands and to the right eyes or eventually we get an audio book done and gets to the right ears. And they uh, seriously, you know, I like business. And one thing I believe in is competition. I think competition only raises the level of uh, the sport, whatever we're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody wants to come out and say some shit like, hey, this book was terrible, then you you uh, you write another one. You write another book. You know what I'm saying? Uh, try to write a book on small business and finance for five, six-year-old, 10, 11-year-old children. You know what I'm saying? Or write a book, period, about your life and your journey, period. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have a lot of people who are going to shit on you, and they're going to have a lot of people who praise you, and you just basically got to keep yourself level-headed and just keep moving. And the funny thing that's going to happen in life is – what I call the 40 percenters, I can't remember the, the article. I read this article a while ago. I was probably in like high school, college when I read this article. But it's the 40 percenters. And 60 percent of people are the people who are in your life every day. These are the people who um, you see every day, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your friends, whoever it is. Or that coworker you work directly next to or your direct leadership. Whoever it is, these are the 60 percent of people who are in your life. Then you have the 40 percenters. These are the people who the security guard that you walk past in the office. This is the cash register that you see at the grocery store. Um, This is that uh, person that you, um, I don't know, as far as went to jail uh, for a night of drinking or something or whatever. And you just happen to exchange phone numbers or information with that individual. These are the people who are not in your lives regularly, but you've had some type of interaction with. Um, It's funny because don't quote me on this, that let's just make up a random number that let's just say 60, 70, 80 percent of your success that you have is not going to come from those 60 percent individuals. It's going to come from those 40 percent individuals. And you say, what in the world? These people are in your lives every day, every day. And they only contribute to approximately maybe 20 percent of your success. You know, uh, and, and don't quote me. I read this article years ago, like at least two decades ago. And so even with my book, I'm not expecting that it's going to be my siblings, my family, my friends that I see every day that are going to help me take this book to the next level. I don't assume it's going to be them at all. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but I do assume it's going to be that person that I stopped by that restaurant, um, that security guard or that person at the grocery store that I walk past and uh, they see me in my book and they see my book somewhere and they're like, hey, you know what? I actually am friends with this person at this, you know, I don't know, this organization that would be interested in getting your book in every book bag or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, compared to the individuals that you speak to every day are going to be the individuals who tell you that there's no way that you're going to get this book into every book bag or summer camps or anything. This book is terrible. This book has too many words. It's, you know, and what also another thing that I deem, and I could be incorrect about this, certain individuals have to figure out how they're going to maintain their position in your life as life transitions so as a as when you're younger you know maybe they were able to feed you clothe you or whatever now you're older you can feed yourself you can clothe clothe yourself uh you can think for yourself you're pretty much good now how do friends and family members transition their role in your life now you know and that's what a good parent does a good parent goes from parenting feeding you clothing you roofing you everything to now possibly becoming whatever their next role is the next role i have heard people say it's the role of the counselor you know now they're a counselor now you're out there living your life but hey if you need any advice or guidance we're here for you same thing with your friends your friends 
maybe they were, you know, um, your right hand man, your wing man, or your 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 leader, or whatever. And as you're, you know, evolving, um, you know, they don't have that same role anymore. And instead of uh, growing in that role, um, one way that they can maintain their role is, I would, for lack of better words, is just to shit on you. You know, just to say, well, I don't think that's a good idea. You know, maybe you should do this or that, you know, that's not a, you know, that's dangerous or that's risky. And yes, they care about you. They have your best interests at heart. But at the same time, in my personal opinion, most people, you know, have what they want, you know, also, which is to continue to be your friend, continue to be your best friend, continue to be your best sibling, whatever it is. You know, so, you know, um, whereas let's just say a random individual, they have no ties to you. They have no reason to hurt you. They have no even though there is this rule out there that uh, I kind of live by a little bit, but they have nothing. They just want to see you win. They just want to see you succeed. As long as they're not a hater, as long as they're somebody that doesn't just care about themselves. They're just like, yeah. Oh, you need a job. Okay, this restaurant gig I got. Right. My family and friends knew I've been out of work for a year they knew my situation my, I, to an extent i even think they contributed to the situation you know to an, a certain extent you know um you know supporting individuals uh you know based on a bunch of bullshit and everything uh contributed to you know the things that i've been going through the last couple of years so they, as far as, you know, I could be wrong, but as far as I'm saying, they contributed to my downfall, essentially. Um, they knew the whole situation. They, they knew my spouse left, you know, took money, all this other stuff. They know all these situations. They may not know all the details and intricacies of everything, but they know the stuff that went down. And what I mean by contribute, they were telling, oh, if you're in such a bad situation, you should leave. Oh, yeah, we know he's like that. We know he's a terrible, you know, we know he can be this way and that way. You know what I'm saying? So the situation happens. People want to play with your life like it's a video game or like it's a reality TV show. And then real real shit happens. Next thing you know, people are leaving. Families are breaking up. People are going through trauma. Children are affecting. uh, Households are affected. All this stuff happens. To an extent, people are like, oh, either they're like, I knew that was going to happen. Or, oh, snap. We didn't know it was that serious. You know, we thought maybe y'all could fight through it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, no. You know what I'm saying? No, shit went bad. So, friends and family know that I'm down and out. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying all friends and family. There's a couple family members that I have to give credit to to support me through the hard times. You know, uh, but as far as anybody, everybody else, nobody was there. Nobody was like, hey, is there any way we can help you out? Job, you know, money, anything? Nothing. You know, but what else? What else they got? You know what I'm saying? Uh, You got that 40% of people out there. It took one individual five minutes, five minutes to make a phone call. I'll tell y'all, I'm sitting at the bar. I'm relaxing. I'm watching the NBA playoffs. I'm promoting my book. Um, actually, I was promoting my book. It was two lovely ladies uh, to my right. And one of my homeboys that I haven't seen in a little while pulls up on my left. And he's like, hey, what's going on, Chan? You know, how's the crew? How's everybody doing? I'm like, good, good, good. He's like, yo, so what you been doing up these days? What you been doing? And I'm like, nothing too much, to be honest with you. I've actually been, um, you know, in between jobs lately. And he's like, what? He's like, let me make a phone call. Makes a phone call. Steps off. Comes back five minutes later. He's like, hey, uh, you got an interview on such and such date. The such and such date was like June 1st, something like that. And they say, no, I go to the people. Uh, we talk, blah, blah, blah. They're like, hey. We're going to move up your interview to, like, May 20th or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so far, it's been there for a couple of weeks. Things been going pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and this was from an individual that's, like, uh, I see occasionally once every six months. You know what I'm saying? Like, once a year. Uh, you know, just a buddy of mine that we used to uh, work together back in the day. Uh, don't even talk regularly, regularly, and took him five minutes. 40%, 40, 40, 40%er, that individual, five minutes. These motherfuckers in my life, in my life daily, 
every day did nothing but uh spread their opinions almost got me to a point where i was like yo y'all keep talking shit i'm gonna have y'all for defamation and character if i can prove it you know what i'm saying or at least have my lawyer send y'all a letter you know what i'm saying and i'm talking about these are close people you know what i'm saying they were trying to tarnish and you know my image oh yeah we know he can be like that oh he's crazy all this bullshit and it's like yo you keep going around with that bullshit i'm serious you're gonna get a letter from a lawyer i'm getting tired of that bullshit because i ain't never did nothing to nobody except try to help people win never anytime anybody start a business anything who's always there chan man sitting there supporting you want to sell a book you're throwing a, an event who's there whether i can buy a book depends on my financial situation my financial situation was tight. I would get 10 books. I may sell a couple. You know what I'm saying? Get my money back. Or, you know, even try to make a couple dollars off of it. But for the most part, 10 books sold. And I know people ain't going to sell their books at my prices. $10, $18. They're going to be selling them for $150, $100. Something crazy. You know what I'm saying? But that's just the type of person I am. You know, so to have people going around trying to throw all that shade on my name... It's like, how in the world? Like, I ain't never did nothing to nobody but try to help people win. Like, how in the world am I now this bad guy or not living up to my potential or crazy or whatever they want to call me? You know what I'm saying? It don't even make no damn sense. You know? And, like, so that's just that's just crazy with the entrepreneurship and everything. Sometimes you got to pivot. And also, it may take a while but it may be the 40% of people who help you out in your life, which are the people, that random security guard that you uh, walk past every day. You don't know what this person got going on. You don't know why they're a security guard. They could be a retiree. They could be a spoiled little child that their mom told them that they got to go get a job. You never know. And I'm not saying go out there and try to look for rich people. But you walk past this individual, a security guard, and you know how sometimes you have a potluck. And on the potluck, you say, you know what? Man, why ain't nobody get the security guard a plate? Nobody even give a fuck about the potluck food anyway. Anyway. Nobody even like that shit. No offense. You know, we don't want to be eating off the cat lady food. You know what I'm saying? We don't know where that curry goat came from. You know, you may got that one lady, you know, that you're like, oh, yeah, nah, I'm getting her food. Her food good. Everybody else, you're like, man, get the fuck out of here. But we still couldn't make a plate of get the fuck out of here food for the security guard. So, I'm the type of person to be like, you know what? Hey, I made a plate for you. You know what I'm saying? And let me tell you what people are going to do when you get that plate to that individual. You're going to have a bunch of fat bitches and just dumbass dudes, whatever, walk up. Oh, yeah, I was going to make you a plate. Oh, yeah, that was so sweet of you, Chandler. You should have. Yeah, I was going to make them a plate, too. No, bitch, you didn't. No, dude, whatever, you didn't. You didn't. You know what I'm saying? And when I did it, I wasn't looking for no credit. I wasn't doing it. I was doing it while everybody was in the party. You know what I'm saying? It just happened that when I walked out, I guess a few individuals walked out too. You know, like, oh, you know, shit, Chandler getting back to work. I guess I should get back to work too. You know what I'm saying? The next thing you know, they see me dropping off the plate like, yo, what's good? Now that security guard may take that and be like, you know what? Yo, Chan, let me get your number, man. You know what I'm saying? Let me get your number. And it's like, yo, what's good? It's like, look, let me tell you something. These people you work for are fucking bigots. They fucking hate your ass. You don't know this shit. The only reason I know it is because I be in the rooms. You know what I'm saying? And giving you, so you sitting there busting your ass, busting your ass at work, trying to come up and don't even realize that you're working for a bunch of fucking bigots. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, listen, I got this other opportunity that I think you could benefit from. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was thinking about doing it, but I didn't have a bachelor's or I didn't have a master's or whatever. And you got to have a master's or you got to have a bachelor's or whatever. You got to be series seven, uh, licensed up or whatever. So I'm, I can pass this off to you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Oh shit, for real. And it's like, the, again, these are these 40 percenters, not knocking 60 percenters. Cause they have your best interest at heart. One movie I love is uh Mississippi damned. That's a movie of 60 percenters. People that just really just want to hold on because they don't want to see you go away. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to see you like, oh, shit. They're getting their degree. They're getting their job. They're getting their fashion. They're getting their nutrition. They're doing good. What are they going to So what are they going to do with us? They don't got to be like that. You can be like a Roscoe Jenkins goes back home. 
You know, it don't always got to be like, just because I'm stepping up means that I'm stepping out. Like, yeah, I'm stepping out, but, you know what I'm saying? Think about the person in the cave. They talk about the parable, the person in the cave. You know, and they're just kind of like, hey, we've been living in this cave for 30 years. Does anybody ever step out of the cave? And it's like, no, we don't step out of the cave. And the one person that steps out of the cave, I, I used to explain this to my spouse all the time. Yo, just because you see me getting degrees and you see me trying to step up in my corporate ladder doesn't mean I'm stepping out on you. Doesn't It doesn't mean that I'm, like, leaving you behind. Like, I'm doing this for the family. My spouse, unfortunately, couldn't see it like that. It was always like, oh, no, you're getting your degrees because you just want to think that you're better than everybody and that everybody thinks you're better and that uh, you're going to, you know, like try to get better jobs and whatever. And it's like, nah, that's not what I'm thinking at all. At all. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking somebody got to do this fucking shit. We can't we can't keep moving up. Just everybody chilling, watching TV, watching reality TV, watching Housewives of Potomac. Can't, we can't. So if somebody got to somebody got to take take it on the chin go back to school get a certification something bring in some more chicken you know gotta get it you know so um you know you just gotta be very careful of the situation and no one to release no one to release no one to release is a very difficult task and and don't get crazy with it you know what i'm saying but no one to release meaning like uh, you want to hold on to something. You're like, I got this. I got this. I got this. I got it. You're holding on to it. Sometimes that shit is kicking your ass. And sometimes it's best to just go ahead and let it go. You know, um, even with my spouse, it's not even so much I'm upset that she's gone. It's more so the way they went out. Like, like her and her boyfriend, yo, they were like grimy. They were grimy and dirty. They were just dirty people, you know? I'm not even mad. It's like, yo, you had to go, you had to go. But they couldn't just leave on a high note. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the dude was shady. Dude is shady. You know what I'm saying? He's sneaky, trying to hide behind backs, trying to do his thing. Wife is basically telling him, I don't know, whatever she's telling him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she's doing shady shit. Um, that's more so what got to me. It's like, damn, y'all are some shady-ass people. You know? Um, but, yeah. The whole knowing to release, uh, to an extent, I kind of felt like I knew it was time probably a couple years even before it happened. You know what I'm saying? It kind of even felt like it was getting time. You know? I mean, of course, I was going to fight through it because, you know, I was raised, uh, you know, Christian. Uh, and in Christian, you know, uh, faith, you know, we don't believe in uh, divorce. So, of course, I was going to try to fight through it. You know, but there was times where you're kind of like, man, I don't know if this is even right for me. You know? Um, so it was kind of like God blessed me and was like, yo, Chan, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to have her up out of here. You know what I'm saying? But I was kind of like, God, did you have to do it like that? You know what I'm saying? But hey, it's like means to an end. It's, it had to be done the way it had to be done. You know, I can't fight it. But um, yeah, sometimes you just got to know when to release. Just when to release. You're trying to hold on to something. Sometimes it's best to just go ahead and release it. And you have no idea what kind of leverage or whatever might happen after it. You have no idea. I'll be honest with you real quick. Uh, and then I got to get ready to go because uh, I got to get this breakfast started. And then um, um, and then I got a couple other things I got to do. But um, ever since I kind of released out of that marriage, right, all my in-laws gone. No offense. They were nothing but headaches anyways. Um, and then... Um, I started hanging out with other individuals who uh, are starting to introduce me to entrepreneurship because, the, you know, these individuals are like, yo, we always knew you wanted to be an entrepreneur. I even joined a networking group of entrepreneurs. And it's like I'm now surrounding myself around people that I was supposed to be around. Motherfuckers that are crazy. Motherfuckers that are weird. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers that have been through a struggle, whether it's addiction, uh, a dirty ass spouse, um, Whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and just helping kind of get through it. You know what I'm saying? Family and friends can act like they can always be your support system about everything. Sometimes it's best when family and friends understand. It's like, yo, we're here to support you. You know what I'm saying? If you need advice or anything, we're here. But we can't be your all. 
You know, sometimes it's good to hear the same message from different individuals because that different individual may just make it click. You know, may make it be like, oh, snap, I didn't think about it that way. You know, somebody else will be like, man, well, we've been saying that to you. Well, shut the fuck up. Nobody cares. Okay, I got the message now. You know, I'm kind of going through it with my spouse as well. I told her, ass, stop bringing all these random people into our, our family. Random guys, random lawyers, all these people. It just hit her like a sack of bricks, I promise, like a week ago. I've been saying it for like two years now. You know, and now I've spent tens of thousands of dollars. Shit. Huh. <sighs> It's getting closer to hundreds of, maybe a hundred thousand, but tens of thousands. And I don't mean like tens of thousands. I mean closer to a hundred thousand dollars for lawyers, for trying to pay bills, trying to survive, groceries, all these different things. Now it's kind of like, oh, snap, we shouldn't be bringing in all these random people. Oh, thanks. I told you this a couple years ago. Could have saved a lot of money. You know, but it's like, screw it. God's going to figure a plan. God's going to figure it out. You know, but yeah, since releasing from that, I don't have those in-laws with their opinions going around telling people whatever it is. Oh, he's a drunk or, oh, he's crazy or whatever. Is he going to get a new job? Whatever it is. I don't have to deal with that nonsense anymore. And from these people that don't provide nothing for you, absolutely nothing. They don't help you with bills. They don't help you with your children. Nothing. All they can do is walk around and just be your greatest spectators. You know, now I'm around individuals that want to support me that want to help me grow in entrepreneurship, show me how to be an entrepreneur. You know, um, uh, one lady that I was talking to uh, yesterday was like, hey, you know, I I didn't even tell her my situation. She was like, hey, you know, uh, my business structure is, uh, we're just talking about entrepreneurship. And I got her information. And she's like, I like to help entrepreneurs that are like lost, you know, uh, that, you know, are working a nine to five or whatever it is. Uh, this is my program. And of course I know I'm gonna have to pay for it. Cause honestly at this age, nobody's, nobody's your friend. And no, no, I'm not going to say nobody, but everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a reason. So I, we exchanged information and she's like, she wants to help me out. You know what I'm saying? But on the other end, I know it's going to be at a cost. She hasn't told me the cost yet. You know what I'm saying? But I know it. It's, she's going to throw her pitch and at the end, it's going to be like, well, how much can you afford? Blah, blah, blah. Because everybody got to get paid. You know what I'm saying? And I understand it. This is it's one entrepreneur to another. But that's just the beauty in, in releasing. And on the other end, uh, I'm not even hopping into like energy and all that. You know, when you finally release whatever it is, hate, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, how much you can grow from there. You know, how much your energy can change and how much now you can radiate whatever you're trying to radiate whether it's entrepreneurship or health and wellness or whatever it is now you can radiate that because you're not radiating all that hate and anger that you have towards whoever it was or whatever happened in your life you know and now you can actually attract the right audience uh, that you're trying to you know speak to or sell to or whatever it is then on the other note uh trusting uh, the 40 percenters, it, it's tough. Cause I do got a bunch of 40 percenters around me right now that everyone's promising me that they're going to help me live and grow and become great and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's hard. It's hard for me to trust them. I'm like, who are you? You know, but you never know. It may be that individual who actually puts you on with somebody to get a job or to get your book published or to get you on stages to speak or whatever it is. So I got to get out of here cause I got to get ready to get breakfast started. Um, uh, basically I got a shift that I got to get to, um, at the restaurant, um, after I cook breakfast, get up to the restaurant, uh, pull a shift. It's not even a full day shift. It's a half a shift. Um, so I'm gonna be up there just for, you know, a few hours. Uh, it ain't gonna be too much. Uh, and then I'm gonna get up, uh, out of there. And then I got a, um, I got a, a dentist appointment in a couple of days. Um, uh, and yeah, going to be working on a few things. So um don't take every criticism as hate you know uh but also uh, just be positive just know you know sometimes you just gotta listen to individuals because individuals want to talk um real quick i gotta get ready to go
right, well, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Channel G Hayes. Welcome, listeners, to a journey filled with excitement, discovery, and financial enlightenment. I'm your host, Chandler G. Hayes, and today I have something truly special to share with you. Imagine a world where adventure and financial literacy collide, where characters come to life to teach valuable lessons in money management. That world exists within the pages of Langston Manson's Cool and Made Adventure, a captivating children's book story authored by yours truly. Chandler G. Hayes. In an enchanting tale, Langston Mangston sets out on an unforgettable journey along with his best friend Zonky to learn about savings, budgeting, and community and the power of entrepreneurship. It's not just a story. This is an educational tool designed to ignite curiosity and empower young minds. So, What is it that inspired me to write this children's story? As a parent and as a person who's passionate about the financial industry, I wanted to create something fun and engaging for children to learn about money, finances, entrepreneurship. Through this adventure of Langston Mangston's, I hope to inspire young readers to be curious and courageous about financial responsibility. And on another note, also, growing up in an area as the DMV, the District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia area, I know the temptations that children can have going in either direction. You know, we have politics on one side, and then we also have um, chemical dependency on another side. And how entrepreneur minds can fall into a trap. So in order to inspire children to also think about entrepreneurship in other ways, this is also what Langston Mason's Cooler Made Adventure is about. So thank you for tuning in to this episode. Don't forget to grab yourself a copy of Langston Mason's Cooler Made Adventure. And please stick around to join us for the rest of the episode, as well as the next episode. Links and Mixon's Cool and Made Adventure is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Goodread, Goodreads, um, and Saxo.com. Also, it is available on a lot of a lot other platforms, so please check it out. I appreciate all of y'all. Love y'all. Challenge Hayes. <laughs>